It's finally here! After years of waiting, the Sony a7S III is real, and it brings with it countless improvements, basically everything you were asking for. 4K 120p video, 10-bit 422 color, that's right, a very angle LCD screen, fast phase detect autofocus, and of course, even better low light performance than before. This means you'll get better color and detail, beautiful slow motion, AF tracking of fast moving subjects, and an overall ease of use with the camera. By now, it's no secret that the a7S has been a hit with filmmakers for years, and for good reason. I was lucky enough to get my hands on the camera for a few days, and let me tell you, it is truly something. <sighs> it's hot. Don't mind the sweat. We'll work through it. Everything in the a7S III is redesigned but it's still based on the idea of using a relatively low resolution 12.1 megapixel full frame sensor to provide insane light sensitivity. Now inside is a new Exmor R CMOS sensor, which uses a backside illuminated design, bringing twice the readout speed of a conventional sensor. Just about everything on this camera is faster and cleaner due to the Bions XR processor, which is eight times faster than the Bions X. One huge benefit of this setup is that rolling shutter is effectively eliminated, which is a huge improvement, I know, over the a7S II. So where do I begin? Overall image quality on the a7S III is stunning. On the still side of things, images are super clean and sharp. Colors look vibrant but natural, and you honestly don't have to work hard to get a great image out of this camera. The sensor can reach deep into the dark, capturing natural and ambient lighting that you simply can't with other cameras. However, it's the supporting features, such as fast autofocus, that really make the a7S III effortless to use, both in stills and in video. Speaking of, let's talk video. Ooh, just look at that skyline. As you can imagine, there's a lot to discuss with video here. We're still looking at a maximum 4K resolution with the camera, which personally I think is still more than enough for nearly every shooter. Now everything else sees massive changes. Let's just get this out there. All resolutions and frame rates can provide 10-bit 422 color. Compared to the previous model and its 8-bit recording, 10-bit color means smoother color gradients and allows you to push a color grade much more. So we have tons of video options here on the camera, and what I really like is that everything's really broken down. So first off is file format. We have all of the XAVC formats. The new ones are the XAVC HS format, which is an HEVC codec, and that gives you a lower bit rate, same quality, uh, so it helps you use smaller capacity cards, or if you even have slower cards, this might actually be good for you. Going down a little bit, we have the standard XAVC S 4K and HD flavors. These are the regular codecs that give you uh, long op encoding. And then down below, we have the intra frame versions. So these are very high 600 megabit recordings. These require a V90 SDXC card or a CF Express Type A. Now going back, we have the actual movie settings. So I'm still in the 4K mode. As you can see here, I have 120p selected. You go in there, and it's just frame rate selections. None of this is tied to your codec or your resolution, so this is all independent. I can go back to 24p for regular recording, and then down here is your bit depth. So you pretty much get the usual 422 10-bit, 4208 bit, and then also a 60 megabit 4208 bit as well. Uh, obviously for this, we're gonna stick with 422 10-bit all the way. Perfect for S-Log recording. You no longer have to settle for 4208 bit. It's been a very bright, humid, hazy week here. So making the most of these kinds of shots, especially the skies, can be tricky in 8-bit. You're very likely to see banding or noise as you grade the image, but that's not a problem here. The a7S III can record up to 4K 120fps, and it can do it either as a native 120p file with audio, or as an HFR video with the playback rate already slowed down. The great thing about slow motion is that it's actually usable in all of the recording modes. So you can use it in the 10-bit 422 mode. You can use it even in the all intra 600 megabit mode. It's pretty much limitless. There's no pixel binning to it. It looks pristine, clean, sharp, crisp, whatever other adjective you want to throw there. The other thing that's really cool is that autofocus, including touch to focus, which is really useful here, is also capable in slow motion. So you can use autofocus in every single mode. 
Colors on the a7S III pop, but they're also natural, and that has a lot to do with the fact that Sony has matched their FX9 and Venice cameras, meaning it should be easier to use the a7S III even in a high-end cinema setup as an additional camera. If you want, though, there are also 10 new creative looks for those looking to stylize their footage without a colorist. Oh man, it's hot. But not as hot as this camera. And I don't just mean physically. I mean feature-wise, of course. Hybrid Law Gamma has actually been on a few of Sony's cameras recently, but this is the first time that it's on the A7S series. And naturally, that means that you can shoot in 10 bit 422. So you're gonna get a very gradable HDR image straight out of camera. You actually don't need to grade it. That's why it's HLG. But you know what? It's nice to have, and we're getting a nice, beautiful wide shot of the Manhattan Bridge right now. Now, here's the big one. 16-bit RAW external recording up to 60p. That's right. Using the full-size HDMI port, the a7S III can send out a 16-bit RAW signal, and even better, still record to dual card slots internally, giving you incredible redundancy options. Now, unfortunately, no recorder right now can record the signal in 16-bit, so we weren't able to test it out. But the option is there in the menus, out of the box. Oh, and um, there's no recording limits whatsoever. It certainly feels hot, but uh, good thing it's got a new cooling system, so I don't think it's gonna overheat. Only one way to find out. The new passive heat management system will even permit long recordings of at least an hour in 4K 60p. Now, Sony says that there's 15 plus stops in the video mode, so uh, you know, right now we're in pretty harsh sunlight. Once we bring it in post, we see how those highlights are handled. I think it's gonna be good, personally, going by experience. Highlight roll-off is very pleasing, and you can recover a lot, probably a little more with the raw mode. Shadows on this camera are also almost supernaturally clean, which, of course, brings us to what you've all been waiting for. The a7S series has always been the king of low light, and that's no different here. But just how good is it? Let's light up the night. What I've done here is ramped up ISO values, starting from either 2500 or 3200, and ramping it up to the maximum of 409,600. There's ambient light around, of course, so the image will eventually become overexposed, but you should get an idea of just how much room you have to play with with this camera. Now, for these tests, I kept things a little conservative at f5.6, but with faster lenses, you don't necessarily need to go as high as these tests show. Now, the ISO ranges here are actually unchanged from the a7S II, but you can see that the camera is cleaner at every level. It's pretty wild to see things through the lens that are indistinguishable with the naked eye. Now, I'm a fan of lighting things, of course, so it's not as though everyone should be shooting at 409,600, but when you can reliably use higher ISO values, it means that you can use softer, smaller lights that delicately paint a scene. Light sources that may not even register in other cameras can provide an ambient glow with the a7S III, such as the colorful, glossy effect you get on the water here, or the almost sci-fi appearance you get from the streetlights filling out the frame. It kind of looks like a motherboard to me. Now, on both stills and video, autofocus has been a strong point in Sony's cameras for quite some time now, so it should be no surprise to see a lot of work done here. There are 759 phase detect AF points and 425 contrast detect AF points, offering 92% coverage. Real-time IAF is now on the camera, both human and animal, along with improved touch tracking as well. So a pretty cool thing is that you can do almost anything with this camera at any time and with any format. It's pretty wild. So right now you can see there's this flower here in the shot. Uh, we have this set up right now for 120 FPS, so we're gonna get a little nice slow motion. It's not too much motion granted, but let's put a touch focus tracker on the flower just so that we keep it in focus as the wind blows. Now, even better than that, we're gonna roll. So now you can see here we're recording. This touch tracker is still going. It's gently following the flower. It's never really losing it. Um, and then better than that though, and this is probably the best use of touch focus in my opinion, is that you can very easily and quickly do a rack focus while it's recording to and from objects. So, you know, if you need to uh, orchestrate a rack focus, if you need to shift your focus very suddenly, the camera has absolutely no problem uh, changing focus, um, you know, at a moment's notice, just with touch, all while recording. It's pretty crazy, it's, it's game changing, honestly. 
So as you can expect, the five axis in-body image stabilizer is still here, it's back. Now upgraded to 5.5 stops of stabilization and that's great because on a 70 to 200 lens, you're gonna want it when you're trying to capture the Manhattan Bridge. Now on the video side of things, there's another stabilizer and that's the image stabilization active mode, which gives a 10% crop, still maintains 4K resolution, but gives you a slightly more stable image. This is similar to Sony's recent ZV-1. So technically this is a mirrorless body. So let's get back to the still side for a bit. While the a7S III is only 12.1 megapixels, if you're not primarily a stills photographer, this could still be an incredible option for web delivery and social media photography. Most of my photos, for instance, are only published online, so I'm not too concerned about resolution. But I am concerned about focus, sharpness, and of course color. You can get some stellar shots here, and for someone whose main focus is video, this is perfect for me. Don't forget that this is essentially a low light camera first. So even though it's only 12.1 megapixels, you might be able to get dark shots with this camera that you can't with anything else. The camera has a Heath recording option. Uh, you can switch it very easily right here. You can see the top of the image quality menu. There's a JPEG and Heath switch. By default, I have it in JPEG, but there is a Heath 420 and even 422 option. Uh, and that's because Heath is literally an HEVC derived still frame. Continuous shooting is available up to 10 FPS with full AF and AE engaged and can deliver over a thousand raw images in a single burst when using a CF Express card. The menus of the a7S III have been completely redesigned and now follow a horizontal hierarchy. So it's very easy to find out where you're going and on top of that, it is a touch menu. So everything is scrollable. Um, you can click very easily, go to exactly where you need to go. Personally, I find these to be a huge improvement to the previous system. On playback, it's very similar. You also have touch functionality here, the usual swipe functions. On still images, you would also have a pinch to zoom function as well. Physically, the a7S III resembles Sony's other most recent mirrorless cameras in the a7 series, though there are some differences in the EVF and of course, the dual card slots, which are more than meets the eye. So there's a dual card slot arrangement here. Now, the really cool thing is we have both SDXC and CF Express Type A, which is a brand new card that uh, is actually debuting alongside the A7S III. But the really cool thing is that each of these slots can actually take either an SDXC or a CF Express. And you can kind of see it's a little wide. This is a very wide slot, so it can fit both cards. Not at the same time, mind you, but it does have dual compatibility. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to test the new cards for this video, but with a smaller form factor than Type B cards, which is what you usually see, the card slots can actually accept either card, which is pretty cool. Looking forward, see if Express Type A can provide much faster speeds than SD cards and have plenty of room to grow. The LCD is nice, but honestly, a day like today, you need the CVF. The new QXGA EVF is an OLED display featuring 0.90 times magnification, a 41 degree field of view, and 25 millimeter high eye point. It kind of immerses you in the image. You feel like you're put right in front of the frame and it helps a lot with composition. It's a sharp EVF, but it's the viewing angle that gives it a kind of immersed feeling when you're looking through the frame. So one of the biggest additions to the a7S III, people are gonna love this, yes a flip out LCD screen. This is a completely vary angle LCD screen. You know, that of course also means that you can do the classic selfie angle. And I know a lot of people are probably breathing a sigh of relief right now. The overall layout on the camera is very similar to Sony's most recent offerings, such as the a7R4. I have to say it's a vast improvement over the a7S II, which was, in my opinion, very cluttered at times. This one also has a completely redesigned mode dial. So switching between video and stills is now only one notch away. And you have, of course, your usual exposure dials, both in the front, the back, and the wheel. So on the left side here, you can see we have a full-size HDMI port. That's what's used to get the 16-bit raw output. And we also have both a micro USB and a USB-C connection. The USB-C connection, by the way, supports both power delivery and connection to a LAN adapter. The camera supports 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi connections internally, and PC remote shooting via Wi-Fi or wired connections. 
Now, while we did touch upon the dual card slots earlier, we didn't have a CF Express Type A card to test. With that said, Sony has also announced the first Type A cards launching with the A7S III. The new CEA G series will bring 80 and 160 gigabyte capacities, offering 800 megabyte a second read speeds and 700 megabyte a second write speeds, necessary of course for the faster raw burst modes and 4K intra frame video. Naturally, there's a new reader as well, the MRW G2. The A7S III packs a lot into a smaller, lighter package than other cameras in its class, coming in at only 614 grams. Sony's XLR adapter, the XLR K3M, will now support four-channel 24-bit recording directly through the A7S III's multi-interface shoe. So, are you excited? The A7S III is a powerhouse of a camera, not only bringing back unparalleled low-light performance, but also adding in recording features and processing advancements that result in some of the cleanest, sharpest images available. Quite frankly, I'm floored with what this camera can do, and between the extreme sensitivity and the super-fast autofocusing, shooting feels effortless. That's it for the Sony A7S III. I'm Doug with B&H, and I'll see you next time.